Hi and welcome back. Today let's use the same card design and turn it from clean and simple to vintage looking. I will share lots of tips and tricks and how I do it and you will see that it is super easy to switch styles and make the most of a card design. For today I will use a container. These are new dies by Waffle Flower and uh, there are many different containers that you may already have in your stash. Just bring a vase, it can be a pot, you can see I have a paper bag here and uh, it can be any size, bigger or smaller. So you can easily recreate what I'm doing and the idea is to have that container at the center of your card and then add inside leaves and branches. So for my first card I'm going clean and simple. This is the flat paper bag die by the new release by Waffle Flower and it is going to be my focal point, my main container. So I cut out the tag out of white cardstock, the paper pad and the huddle out of craft cardstock and I do have a tiny little heart out of red. Now the idea is to have uh, leaves and branches coming out from the bag and I'm going to use some of the branches from these stems dies. I used one of my stitched rectangle dies to cut out a small panel and I'm going to ink it with a couple of uh, Distress Oxide inks. I'm using my Waffle Flower brushes here and I absolutely love the stand. It helps me keep my craft desk nice and organized. So I'm going to blend those two colors and they match beautifully together. You can leave it quite uh, pale as it is now. I'm going heavy handed since I want to have a vibrant color on my background. However, since this is uh, going to be the clean and simple card, you can definitely omit inking completely. You can even use a pattern paper as your background panel or even leave it white. To add just some extra touch of something at the background or to make it look more interesting, I'm going to bring in this tiny heart stencil. By the way, I'm working on the mini stencil mat by Waffle Flower. I like it because I know exactly where the ink is. Since my glass mat is completely black, sometimes I don't know if I have ink on top of my craft table and um, I transfer ink on my projects. So this uh, white mat is really helpful for that. Plus, it cleans up really easily. So I did add a little bit of that stenciling with uh, the colors that I already had as well as a few water splashes. And now I have all the elements that I want for creating my card. I'm going to put the paper back together. I'm going to add a little bit of glue, just a couple of dots up there and then slide the handle inside those um, holes. Now I'm going to bring in my thin foam strips. These are by Waffle Flower. And uh, I'm going to use a thin one and go all around the back of the paper bag. I'm making sure that I leave the center of um, the paper bag empty from foam tape since I want to tuck inside those branches. I will stick it on top of my panel and then add inside the branches that I cut out. You can use different colors of cardstock to cut out the same branch. It will look um, different and it is going to give some depth on your little composition in there. You can also add flowers if you like. I decided for this card to stay away from flowers, but you can definitely do that. I'm also going to put together that little tag, so I will add a dot of glue at the back of my white tag, stick it as if it is hanging from the handle. And I do have a tiny little uh, red heart that I cut out, which I'm going to fit inside the hole. And although I don't always show it on the video, I always make multiples of the same card since I do have um, the um, supplies on my craft desk. So here is another version of the same card without inked background. However, I did use the stencil with the hearts and you can see how cute it looks. Anyway, back to the first version. And I'm going to stick that on top of a standard card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. To make my leaf composition inside the back look fuller, I went ahead and used another branch from the same stems die set and I cut it out this time from a darker colored cardstock so that I can have some variation of leaves, both in terms of shape as well as in terms of color. And of course if you try to recreate this uh, design, all you need to do is to find a container and add the leaves inside. Stick it at the center of a panel, either this would be an inked panel, a pattern paper panel or even a simple white panel and then stick that on top of your standard card. 
To take your design a step further, you can add some white dots on top of the leaves as well as here and there at the background. I am doing that because by adding those dots, bigger and smaller, it adds a touch of a whimsical look on the design and at the same time it gives more interest up there so I don't really need to add flowers. For my sentiment I went with thinking of you and I'm going to stick that on top of my card by adding some foam tape and I did double up the foam tape behind the word you so my sentiment is perfectly leveled. Absolutely love this paper bag design as my focal point and you can have flowers coming out of that or even little butterflies, the sky is the limit really. And now let's move on and create the same idea, the same card design with a different container in a vintage look. So I'm going with this die that gives you that flower wrap made out of paper and uh, it comes from the special delivery die set by Waffle Flower. I'm going to die cut it from a pattern paper that I had in my stash forever that looks like newspaper. You can use a book page for that and if you are going with a different container like for example a vase just cut it out from a pattern paper that has a design on top. It really makes a difference. Then all you need to do to, to turn it uh, into looking vintage is to use vintage photo. That's my recipe and my number one tip when I go vintage style. So I'm using vintage photo here. I will add some inking on the edges and then I will just put this paper up together. This is another great die by Waffle Flower. I love how it is quite big so it makes an impact as a focal point on top of a card. Plus we all do have flowers and leaves that we can tuck inside. And it is quite dimensional. I made sure that it is not flat so I can easily tuck inside little elements. And I'm going to bring in the previous card and let's repeat the exact same design. So I need the panel. So grab your paper trimmer and uh, a pattern paper. For that I went with a pattern paper from a super old collection by Tim Holtz. This is one that I had in my stash for ages. It does say new at the top but forget completely about that. It is super super old. In any case grab any pattern paper. I will show you how to turn it vintage looking. The size of the panel is three and a quarter by four and a half and I did use my paper trimmer that has a deckled edge to give a decorative edge on my panel that looks like vintage. It gives that look and feel. If you don't have this deckled edge paper trimmer, fear not, all you can do is to just go around the edges of your pattern paper with your scissor and distress it. Then the next step to make it look more vintage is to add some brown on the edges. I went again with a vintage photo and for a darker touch I used ground espresso. And now for putting the card together I did use some white glue at the back of my focal point. I'm going to stick it on an angle. Now again I did use the stems die set by Waffle Flower. I did cut out a few of the leaves as well as a rose. And of course you need to give the same look and feel as the rest of the elements on a vintage card. So you don't need to have, you don't want to have bright, um, clean cutouts. That's why I went again and inked up slightly all the cutouts. For the rose I cut out the whole thing out of green cardstock and then only the top out of uh, red. And I'm going to stick one on top of the other to put the rose together. And now of course it's just a matter of tucking everything inside. I'm using glue at the bottom. I'm not sticking everything completely flat so I have a little bit of movement. And for the rose I went with a little piece of foam tape at the back of the rose. But for the stem I'm going with glue. In the beginning of the design I was thinking that I need only one rose. However I decided to add one extra just for that red touch. Another one of my go-to tips when it comes to vintage cards is to use a card base made out of craft cardstock. You will need to ink up the edges. Again here I'm going to use two colors of brown. My go-to combination is vintage photo and ground espresso only at the edge. And here is a little handy tip. If you keep your ink pad against your uh, silicone mat, it's not going to move on you. Look how I load the brush without having to hold the ink pad with my other hand. Then grab any text stamp that you have with tiny text and just add a little stamping around the border. 
This, in terms of design, it adds a visual texture and at the same time it gives that look and feel of vintage. This is not supposed to be readable so you can stamp on top again and again and definitely don't go for the perfect impression. And finally I have foam tape at the back of my blue panel and I'm going to stick it on top of my card base. Back to the first card and you can see where the sentiment is, so let's add another sentiment here in the exact same way. Remember, in a vintage card you don't want to have anything vibrant white, so if you have a white sentiment just think it up slightly with your blending tool and with foam tape at the back I'm going to put it in place. In a vintage card you can always add a touch of gold. For this card I decided to add a little bow. This comes from a bow I set by Waffle Flower. I did cut it out from gold cardstock and I'm going to stick it in place. And in the first card I did add some dots with my white Nouveau Drops. This time I'm going with gold Nouveau Drops. Again, using the same idea, adding some on top of the bouquet as well as a few at the background. Two completely different looking cards starting from the same idea, a container at the center of a card with flowers and leaves inside. I remember card making doesn't have to be difficult, by using the same card design you can end up with completely different looks just by switching the colors and following a few tips and tricks. I hope this video was helpful today, that you had fun and that you got inspired. Don't forget to like and comment and I'll see you all next time.